Hello everyone, Stephen Clark here and friends back with another news from Thailand and Southeast Asia and beyond. Okay, first up we've got China boycott of Australian exports. Former Prime Minister of Thailand and fugitive from Thailand, Thaksin Shinawatra, gives his uh, viewpoint on the lockdown in Thailand. The Thai government is warning ex-coronavirus victims, that are still alive of course, not to be intimate or having sex for the next three months. So after nearly dying, now you're not allowed to have sex. Macro Thailand is doing a bit of hiring there, putting on people that are out of work. Thai government confirms 14.5 million Thais get 5,000 baht. Thai transport minister proposes a 300 baht for a tourist levy. All you really need is the tourists to get it off. A look at a Thai woman bashing up a little puppy. The latest on the Philippines' tropical storm causing havoc. And Lao's ex-Prime Minister passes away at 92. Okay, let's have a look. Chinese boycott of Australian imports. That's a bit nasty. This week, China has suggested it would impose an 80% tariff on Australian barley and has already suspended imports of Australian beef from the major suppliers because the beef had the wrong labels on them. That was their official excuse. What, not made of plastic like you exported to Thailand and a lot of other countries? Nearly every meal in China is eaten with rice, so you'd think they would ensure it was safe, right? Nope! It turns out many factories added cancer-causing synthetic resin to their rice. How gross is that? Well, I hope they put the correct labels on the rice. Contains plastic. Anyway, getting back to the main story, we'll get back to that rubbish later. China had a very good deal with Australia over the past years. Now Chinese Communist Party is putting all that at risk by making unfounded threats towards the Australian continent and showing the world what happens if you cross the Chinese Communist Party and when they don't get their own way, especially when it comes to the Chinese coronavirus. After spreading their coronavirus pandemic throughout Australia and the rest of the world, now they've decided to boycott exports of Australian products into China because the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and many world leaders wanted an inquiry into the coronavirus. The outbreak started in China and has cost many lives worldwide. Also, governments worldwide want to prevent this from ever happening again. China's The Nation's state-controlled media and trade experts warn China's boycott could extend beyond beef and barley with iron ore worth 63 billion a year to Australia's economy potentially could be the next in line. The Global Times, a mouthpiece for the Chinese Communist Party government could very easily turn to Brazil for its iron ore and did not need Australian imports. The latest meat import suspensions and the possibility of major import tariffs on Australia's barley exports don't necessarily represent China's economic punishment for Australia. Though they may serve as a wake-up call for Australia to reflect on its economical links with China, the Global Times said on Wednesday. While China is the only choice for Australia's massive commodity exports, Australia is not necessarily the only option for China. There are also other countries like Brazil that can supply huge amounts of iron ore to China. But what China doesn't realise is that these countries will look at their dealings with China and the Chinese Communist Party and see the benefits and disadvantages of dealing with a country that can try to control them through the imports. This is the cost of anybody dealing with the Chinese Communist Party. And as for Australia, these restrictions may serve as a wake-up call for Australia to reflect on its economical links with China, the Global Times said. But they do not mention the cost to China to do this. China gets a very good deal from Australia during the pre-coronavirus times. The Chinese Communist Party failed to realise the whole world does not want made in China anymore. So maybe they will not want too much iron ore in the future from anybody, including Australia. I'm sure many countries in the world will be after iron ore when thousands of large companies have left the shores of China in the very near future. China would continue to use economic coercion for political ends. What the Chinese Communist Party doesn't realise or has forgotten the benefits of dealing with Australia. So China could wonder whether it will be on the back foot or digging its own grave. 
The Chinese Communist Party does not want an independent inquiry into Wu Yin. The whole world already knows how the Chinese Communist Party's virus was released upon the world. How many people have to die worldwide from their stupidity and their experiments? The whole world is now watching the Chinese Communist Party. You really want to behave yourself, for it will be no longer made in China. Oh look, just in, the US has a shortage of beef. They've just ordered from Australia, apparently. The former ousted Prime Minister from Thailand and current fugitive, former PM Thaksin Shinawatra, said he believed the lockdown introduced in Thailand to stop the spread of the coronavirus outbreak was not the way to go. He maintains current restrictions are hurting the economy and the introduction was a mistake. Tuxin stated when he criticised the measures put in place by the current administration. He said he's been listening to the thoughts of various experts, both medical and academic, and claims many countries don't understand the virus. Referring to his easily handling of the two viruses, SARS and bird flu outbreak while he was Prime Minister of Thailand from 2003 to 2005. He said the country's economy should not face such a significant threat as a result of restrictions of the lockdown policy by the current government. He praised the Pu Thai party for sending aid to poverty-stricken people in the northeast of the country during the 2003 SARS outbreak. Tuxin shipped stocks of hand sanitizer to the same region, which is home to his most ardent supporters. He also stated he approves of Thanathorn, the former leader of the now defunct Future Forward Party, who has donated medical supplies to various hospitals around the country. Despite his comments, he maintains he doesn't want to get involved in Thailand's politics, saying he's simply concerned for the Thai citizens currently suffering financial hardships. Thaksin Shinawatra has been living in exile since being oysted by the military coup in 2006. In 2008, following a trial in his absence, the ruling junta found him guilty of corruption and sentenced him to two years imprisonment. The military did much the same by staging another coup when Tuxin's sister, Yingluck Shinawatra, was removed from office, then tried on charges of corruption in a rice pledging scheme. Yingluck vanished days before the sentence was handed down and now also lives overseas the same as her brother as a fugitive from Thailand authorities. Coronavirus survivors should wait a month before getting intimate. At least that's what one of the Thai medical experts is saying. No sex for 30 days for some. And for ugly people, a permanent ban. <laughs> that may be worse than 14 days of quarantine. Semen of recovering patients may contain the coronavirus and all sorts of little things in it. According to senior medical experts at the Disease Control Department, the claim is found in recent studies published in a journal of the American Association. Don't know about that, sounds like something Playboy magazine would be running with. Anyway, moving right along. The study examined the semen of 38 men that had coronavirus at a Chinese hospital. 23 of the patients were recovering. Only two of them had the virus in their semen. Hmm. Due to the small sample size, researchers say there's more study needed. <laughs> but the fact that the virus was found in the semen of two recovering patients was considered worthwhile and it needed a further investigation. Um, okay. The study goes on to say that more research should be done about the sexual transmission of viruses as well as how long the virus remains in the penis. <laughs> A uh, sliver of recovering patients. Uh, they su the, the <laughs> survivors should even hold off on kissing, as the virus could be transmitted through the mouth. Well, that cuts out oral sex, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Ooh. Bye now. Yeah. Well, uh, leave your comments below. <laughs> Getting back to normal. Macro are hiring. The CEO said priority was to help people who lost their jobs due to CCP virus. 250 people for pick and pack duties. 
The delivery department will hire 300 motorcycle delivery riders and also 80 delivery drivers and 80 cargo lift personnel. Also, project and guidance for people who want to open grocery stores to add to the existing 141 macro stores. With great enthusiasm so far with more than 10,000 having already registered. Well, that's a very good thing for Tyree and for the common person. Johnny out. Thai government confirms 14.5 million Thai citizens have passed the eligibility screening for the three-month 5,000 baht state subsidy. Mr. La Wan, director of the fiscal and spokesman for the financial ministry, said that the 14.5 million included 4.4 million who passed the first round screening and have received the initial cash, plus 5.3 million who qualify after they submitted additional information about their occupations and the 4.7 million who appealed against their disqualification in the first round. Mr. Lawan said that 14.2 million people will receive 5,000 baht next week, while the remaining 300,000 will receive it in due course. But Mr. Lawan said that those who are yet to receive the subsidy can lodge complaints with certain banks. The Tourist and Sports Minister of Thailand proposes a 300 baht tourist levy. It's going to be challenging enough for both the Thai tourism industry and the travellers to get Thailand's tourist wheels in motion again, without a new levy being added as well. But now the Tourism and Sports Minister is saying they are considering a new 300 baht tax from every foreigner arrival. The reason is that the new levy would cover pandemic insurance. The Tourism and Sports Minister suggests that the proposed new tax would be for all arrivals, whether by air, land or sea transport. The Tourism and Sports Minister reminds us that his idea was put into the Cabinet last year, but was delayed as the Government were more concerned by the already dropping demand for tourism, mostly because of the high exchange rate of the Thai bar and softening numbers of arrivals, especially the Chinese but the Minister says he believes that now is the right time to kick off the scheme. Once the feasibility study is finished, the proposal will go to Cabinet with a plan to introduce the tax by the end of the year. The Minister proposes that the 300 baht levy is added to the price of airline tickets and then collected from the airlines. There is currently no proposal how they would collect that levy from arrivals over land and sea borders. As long as Thailand has a clean plan on how to use the funds effectively and benefit international tourism, it should not create any obstacles at this stage. When international flights may restart, the conditions imposed on travellers and which airlines will be operating into Thailand in the future are all up in the air. But then again, you look at the tourists, they might put that in the too hard basket. Before Thailand's industry even takes off, it'll fall out of the sky. Tell us what you think in the comments below. You've heard of the expression, great mate, wolf, dog, a man's best friend. A Chongbri woman was given a suspended sentence for six months jail for abusing a pup. She was also given a 10,000 baht fine, 24 hours community service and a parole for 12 months because she confessed to animal cruelty. She also admitted to beating the pup but went overboard. So hopefully she will learn out of that and become a better person for it. Johnny out. Once again, it's that time of year. The Philippines. A tropical storm has made thousands flee. Eastern Visaya, Bacalope are under signal one due to the storm. Social distancing has become a problem as some have been turned away from shelters. These things come every year, but the CCP virus, hopefully only once in a lifetime. Unfortunately, there were a few deaths 
and a lot of destruction. As before, these people have got over it. So, good on them and we wish them the best. Laos. Our condolences go out to the people of Laos. The former Prime Minister who died this week at the age of 92. It's a wonderful innings. And for the people of Laos, our condolences. Johnny out.